Hey friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about pregnancy tips. So these aren't like how to get rid of nausea and like the typical tips you would get. <laughs> these are like pregnancy tips to stay sane during the nine, 10 months of pregnancy. So <laughs> I'm just gonna dive right in. So the first one is buy clothes that make you feel good. So I'm all for the moms that are like super petite and don't put on any weight and they're like, I never had to buy any maternity clothes. Cool, awesome, not me. <laughs> now, I haven't really bought a lot of maternity clothes as in like from a maternity section or store, but I have invested in some really comfy yet cute clothing as far as like tops that are loose fitting, um, sweatpants that are cute but also loose fitting and comfortable, just clothes that make you feel good. That is, that is the underlying goal because you're going to gain weight your body is going to change. It's going to be hard when you put on the clothes that you used to wear and you don't fit at all. And like you guys, it didn't take long for me not to fit in my pants and have shirts be tight and not fit the right way. And it's just, you don't need that in your life. You don't need that extra like anxiety or stress that comes with your changing body. So just honor the fact that your body is going to be changing for the next nine months and you deserve some comfy cute clothes so invest i don't have like a ton i just have some staple items um my sweatpants match like every single top as well as the tops matching every single bottom so i'm not like getting like specific outfits i'm more so finding like neutral colors that all can go together mix and match and so i have a solid like 10 items 15 items tops that i've been wearing for the past like however many months i couldn't fit in my actual clothes so do that because that's again just gonna release that like putting on something and having it not fit and just being discouraged and you already don't feel like yourself so like just help yourself out and buy invest in some comfy clothing and postpartum you're gonna want loose fitting clothing too because your body doesn't just snap back so make sure that you are investing taking care of yourself in that way okay number two number two is move your body every single day um, i would add to that get out in the sun if you can first thing in the morning because those two things are going to keep your mental state so much clearer you're gonna help yourself out so much more again you're gonna have tons of different emotions and hormones and changes like you gotta help yourself out in this season um so my top tip is getting outside first thing in the morning getting some sun on my face it only has to be like 10 to 15 minutes to work its magic um and then move your body now i don't mean that you have to work out or pick up working out during pregnancy if you are Already work out I'm not saying that you have to work out every single day I'm saying move your body because um, doing something that feels good to you again um, that gets your body moving first off will just help you during labor and delivery to have an active awesome body but also the endorphins are amazing <laughs> they're very helpful right um, so do something that feels good to you whether I found this like dance um, Dang it, I wish I remembered their names, but I found these like dance classes that you can take on YouTube and they're super simple. Like I'm doing them nine months pregnant and I do not feel like I'm pulling anything or going too far at all. And I'm really not good at dancing, <laughs> but um, there's something about dancing that makes me feel so good. So I'm like, why don't I do this? Because I cannot do the workouts I was doing before right now, um, this late in pregnancy. But um, throughout the beginning of pregnancy, I felt really good about doing those workouts and they really really did help so um whatever that looks like you like looks like for you <laughs> move your body um and again like there's so many different things like swimming going in on a bike ride walking um you know doing yoga literally find something that you want to do that's another key to this is i think that you know we've always looked at fitness as something like it's only doing the work that we need it to if we hate it 
you know, like it's like everyone dreads working out. And I just really want to like flip that script and be like, no, like I truly believe that everyone can find something that they enjoy that also moves their body. Like they just have to go out and explore it. Like it could be playing pickleball. It could be playing um, tennis. It could be rowing a boat. <laughs> like literally we just have limited ourselves to workout programs and heavy lifting and all this different stuff. That's a whole nother video. Um, but this tip went extra long and all I'm trying to say is find a movement type that gets you excited to do and feels good in your body because it will help you. It will clear your mind. I feel so different after I've moved my body than before. Um, and yeah, it's just night and day for me. So I hope that helps you too. Another thing is three is educate yourself. So I'm kind of doing this, like, it's hard for me to talk about this because I think that we have a lot more, we know a lot more than we think. You're going to be the best mom for your baby. You're going to know exactly what to do. And if you don't, you're going to have the support to help you find out what to do. Um, so I don't want this to cause any anxiety. But for me, it kind of did the opposite. It took away a lot of anxiety when I started to look into YouTube videos and take the um, prenatal classes that were offered at my hospital and ask a lot of questions, just educating myself, it really felt like um, the anxiety was being lifted off. Now, I, I know that there's a line and you can get too much education or, you know, feel like you don't know enough um, and that can get really... Um, make you nervous but I think that any education is just going to make you a little bit more comfortable in your ability to care for your baby even though you were made for this and I know that you can do this. So that being said ask your doctor a bunch of questions whenever you're in there don't that's her job right don't feel timid about that. I found some amazing YouTube um, moms that have created a lot of videos you guys like there's no manual out for this <laughs> like I I like it's so crazy that there's like no education on how to raise your kids or how to keep a newborn alive or all of these different things that we're now being like thrusted into. So I just felt like the more videos I watched and the more moms I spoke to and the more I spoke to my doctor, the better I felt in my journey. And so um, yeah, that tip is just educate yourself. If it feels good, if it doesn't feel good and it's giving you anxiety, then turn it off. For example, I have another one. I'll talk about that um, in the next one. So the next one is protect your energy. And I am serious about this because you are so vulnerable right now. Your hormones are all over the place. Your energy is all over the place. You've never, maybe this is your second kid, so you've done this before, but Every pregnancy is different, I've heard too, so you've never done this before. So give yourself a lot of grace and protect your energy. Again, you're going to feel things deeper than you ever have and you're going to go higher than you ever have if your experience is anything like mine. And so I've had to, I love it because it's actually made me way more aware of what my triggers are what is too much where are my boundaries right I probably was able to handle a little bit more before pregnancy but why right why not cut it off where um where I feel vulnerable while I'm pregnant you know that's only going to make me healthier and have clear boundaries so this what this looks like in my life is like really Instagram was a huge one so it it is our human nature to look at something and compare and judge, right? So this is what I was talking about in the last one about educate yourself. I started following all of these moms, all of these postpartum care, pregnancy nutrition, dietitians, oh, so many people. And I thought it had really had good intentions behind it, right? I was like, I just need to get all these moms in my circle and be able to digest whatever they're putting out there. And you guys, there's just too much. There's just way too much out there, right? So what I would suggest is that you find like five tops, five women that you 
feel that their content is, you know, adding value to your life, maybe educating you, inspiring you, um, you know, their story is resonating with you, whatever it is, make sure it feels good. If you haven't noticed, all of this comes back to focusing on how it feels for you. Okay. So find like five different accounts that, in, that do one of those things, follow them and then unfollow the rest. Unfollow them. <laughs> because what I found is there was just too much information out there. And of course, there's not a manual. So everyone's doing this differently. So if you have all of these different opinions and ways of doing things coming in, I just, I literally had an anxiety breakdown the other day because I had just been on social media like way too much that day and I had already followed all of those women and so I was just digesting so much my brain was just so oversaturated and of course I was comparing myself to their bodies or how they do things or how they show up and I'm like how does she have makeup on and she's 40 weeks pregnant and I'm sitting in bed doing my homework and I haven't showered in three days you know like it's so easy to compare so even if they are an uplifting, awesome, positive, genuine person, they can still not serve you, right? You're the only one that's going to know if it feels good. So protect your energy. Again, like we are way more sensitive to anxiety, to depression, to highs and lows and all the different emotions. You guys, I watch a movie sometimes and I'm like, Ryan, we have to turn this off because someone like died and I'm like so emotional about it. And it's like, <laughs> I can't, I can't separate there's no separation it's like happening for me so again i've just had to really get in tune with what i can handle and what i can't and honoring what i cannot handle is self-love it is self-love and i again i've really enjoyed this process because it showed me like okay maybe when i'm you know not pregnant I can handle these things, but I'm probably still really sensitive to them. I'm just handling them, you know? And so like now when I'm done being pregnant, I'm probably not going to go back to those things because I mean, if they made me sensitive while I was pregnant, they're probably still affecting me when I'm not pregnant. So yeah, that was a lot. <laughs> but like I said, they, there's all these different um different things that come into us and we're not really asking for them. For example, like other people will tell you their birth stories or will tell you this horrific thing about pregnancy or postpartum. And it's, I know that they have good intentions behind why they're sharing that. Maybe they don't even like consciously know that they're doing it. Um, but that can really, you know, change how you feel and it can really affect you. So, you know, being okay with saying, Hey, like I'm really vulnerable right now. I'm not, I don't want to hear about that. Sorry, I can't hear that right now. Hey, I really respect your story or I really respect what you're saying or I really respect your advice, but you know, I'm just uh, trying to really stay on top of my mental health right now and I just can't really add anything in. Like, I don't know, find a way to say something where you can set a boundary when someone starts rambling about <laughs> their story or what they went through and being like, hey, like I really understand, you know, whatever, however you go about that. I would honestly practice it, write it down. Um, I obviously haven't perfected it, but I'm really blunt. I'm like, hey, I can't hear that right now. Like I'm super vulnerable. Like literally that's enough for me because I don't feel like I have to, I'm, I'm the one that takes care of me, right? So I don't feel like I have to explain myself to anyone because I know I don't because as long as I'm honoring myself, I'm honoring everyone else. So that's all I say is like, hey, whatever situation it is, I'm like, hey, can't, nope absolutely not right now <laughs> like we were watching a movie the other day and I just shut the computer I was like can't nope can't do it <laughs> and we watched something else um so just be able to speak up for your needs what feels good to you is what you should do what feels not so good is is your reason and in your um I don't know the word because I have pregnancy brain <laughs> Um, if it doesn't feel good to you, you have the right to say no, that's enough, I can't, whatever, however you go about that, you have the right and use it.
Um, okay. Another tip is ask your doctor, not Google. <laughs> Again, we are so vulnerable. There's no manual on how to do this. We probably have so many unknowns and questions and things come up uh, through pregnancy that you're like, Ooh, can I do this? Can I not do this? Is this good for the baby? Is this not good for the baby? Um, should I be taking this? This mom told me I should do this. You know, like there's just so many things that I feel going to Google was the worst thing that I possibly could do because, again, I am met with so many different things and everyone's got, it's like a, it's like so much information, but it's not clear, right? It's not like, this is the answer. <laughs> it's like, well, this study said this, or this study said this, or it's not even a real study and you're reading it like it's a study. And it's like, you know, you can just absolutely overwhelm yourself with that. So what I did was I never write it into Google. And instead, I write it into my doctor. I don't know if everyone has this capability. But through my doctor, we have this like portal online where I can ask questions in between appointments. Um, but if you don't have that, and she gets back to me within like 24 to 48 hours. And again, she's giving me like a straight up answer, not like one that I can dabble with again and get more anxious about. No, she's like, this is this is my answer. This is my opinion. And then I can go off of that. Um, and do what feels best for me too. I'm not saying that your doctor knows everything and that they always are correct. Like, it's okay to do your own research, but I think that um, you got to be careful when Google is your <laughs> research base. Like, if you really want to do your own research, I think you need to find like peer reviewed, like look into the study, you know, I don't know. I think my doctor is the best bet at this point, unless I'm wanting to take the time to do my own research and actually do the research. Um, so if you don't have that feature, I would just write down, like get a journal or in your notes on your on your phone, write down your questions and feel okay with not knowing the answer until you talk to your doctor, that's okay. Um, so those are my tips and those are all tips. Again, they're not like practical tips in the way that like you can combat nausea or all the different fun side effects of pregnancy, but they are practical tips in protecting your energy and taking care of you during this very vulnerable season of life. Now, I want to end this by saying you are the best mom for your baby and you're going to do amazing. And I know that because you were given this baby on purpose, for a purpose, with a purpose. I believe that with all of my heart. How to know that this is the baby that was meant for you is because you're having this baby. Okay, so that's that's really all you need in order to take the best care of your baby. Everything else is just extra. You're going to know what to do. You're going to have that mama instinct. Um, you're going to take amazing care of your baby. So just don't overwhelm yourself. And please, 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 please do everything you possibly can to take care of yourself in this season. I know it's really easy to be like, I need to take care of my baby and, you know, really put baby first, especially postpartum, which I am going to do a video on um, uh, the postpartum experience. But I want to wait till after I've gone through it. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying here is it's really easy to focus on the baby because yes, it's a new baby and all that stuff, but you're also a mom. And if this is your first baby, that you're being born into being a mom for the first time. So not only is a baby born, but also a mom. And if this is your first time, like I said, you don't, this is your first time. You haven't done this before, right? So it's normal to be overwhelmed and you know have a lot of uncertainty and so it's really important to just take care of yourself please I wish I could hug you across the phone because I would really love a hug right now <laughs> um but yeah the only thing I would add on to this is talk talk to the loved ones you have in your life Sh talk to your doctor maybe you get a therapist during this time um I just think talking is so, so therapeutic and it gets it out of your head, out of your heart and into the world where you can actually look at it and digest it and dig into it a little bit deeper. And if you have someone that really loves you, like they're going to meet you right there and they're going to be able to, you know, really sit with that, sit with you through that, which is so incredibly healing. So 
talk. I should add that on there and I just did. So that's a serious one. I think talking it out, whether no matter who that is, just making sure it's someone that you really trust, it's going to honor um, what you're going through and not make you feel any different about it. <laughs> just sit with you in it. And that's just, that really, really helps. So I hope this helps somebody out there. Again, I am so excited for you. If you're expecting your baby, congrats. Um, if you already have a baby, I'm jealous because I can't wait to hold mine. Um, and I'm just so excited to be on this journey of motherhood with you guys. So thanks for watching. Bye.